Hi, this is Kimberly. A little while ago I uploaded a video and it was taking like two hours to upload because it was quite long. The rapidly developing story of Fotis Dulos in the past couple of days and of course it was announced he was dead before it finished uploading. I wanted to go ahead and do it anyway just for people that really like to follow it so everybody can quit messaging me now saying he's dead because yeah I know. This is some more news reports that I gathered together. There's a pretty interesting news story about discussing Fotis Dulos on the Dr. Oz show. And this is from January 14th, just over two weeks ago. And I just hope that we now get the full story of what happened. Maybe his ex-girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, will sing like a canary. I hope so. Have a great, have a great night. Thank you. to the murder case of missing mother of five, Jennifer Dulos. Her estranged husband, who's been arrested for her murder, is making national headlines once again. Just a couple of hours ago, the case was talked about on Dr. Oz, and his panel of experts is saying the state has a good case. Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Courtney Zeller is here now with more on why they believe that. Courtney? Well, Dennis, this panel weighed in on this case and the evidence police found Jennifer's bloody clothes and zip ties with her DNA on it. But they were also focused on that third arrest, attorney Kent Mawinney and how they believe he helped cover up a crime. It's a case making headlines all over the country. Husband of missing Connecticut mom now charged with her murder. Fotis Dulos facing murder charges talked about on Dr. Oz. A panel of experts weigh in on the recently released arrest warrants. State police believe Dulos had help covering up the crime, and it's not just former girlfriend Michelle Traconas, but also Dulos' attorney, Kent Mawinney. Boy, is this an interesting development. Now, Kent is a longtime friend. In this case, he was part of a conspiracy to help Fotis kill Jennifer and dispose of the body. And they're saying that he did this in a few ways. The panel mentioned the possible grave for Jennifer in the woods behind a gun club, which Mawinney belonged to. Mawinney was arrested at gunpoint in Tallinn after they say they believe he was trying to flee. They also discussed what evidence was found by state police. Jennifer's clothing with her blood on it, along with a torn plastic garbage bag with Fotis's fingerprint and zip ties with Jennifer's DNA on it. Police believe that they were used to confine her, to tie her up before her death. We've also learned that police have recovered an axe from Fotis's home during the Ooh. time that he was being arrested. They are testing that for DNA. And to think that her final moments consisted of p potentially zip ties and an axe, it's just chilling. And for this panel, they believe based on arrest warrants, a jury could find Dulos guilty of murder. Short answer is yes and then some. Listen, in the event that she's around, there may be some cell phone activity. Everyone, every five minutes, someone's on their cell phone. We're texting, we're calling. Guess what? No cell phone activity. You mix that with all the other information. You talked about Mara addressed it, right? The issue with the zip ties and there's blood on that. You got blood on her car. You got blood in the garage. You got blood on the sink. I mean, you got bags everywhere. You have him dumping, allegedly, bags along with his girlfriend along the road. What does that equal, ladies and gentlemen? Use that common sense. Use that good judgment. Now, they also found interesting that Mawinney claimed he damaged his cell phone when he fell down some stairs and got a concussion. Now, this all happened a day after Jennifer disappeared, so he said he had no memory of seeing Dulos or Traconas. The panel thought that was unusual and very convenient. He would not remember. All three are expected in court next month. I'm Courtney Zeller, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. 
First up for you right now at 4.30, we continue to follow developing news. Fotis Dulos is still clinging to life in a New York City hospital right now. Channel 3 New Haven Bureau Chief Matt McFarlane is live outside Jacoby Medical Center in the Bronx with the very latest. And Matt, what are you learning right now? Well, Aaron and Mark, you know, uh, we saw defense attorney Norm Pattis step outside of the hospital earlier this afternoon with the family of Fotis Dulos. They flew in from Greece last night. Uh, they are here visiting, but uh, then they went back inside. Uh, you know, uh, yesterday the defense team described Dulos's condition as dire. Today, uh, they are not saying much about his health. In fact, when reporters spotted defense co-counsel Kevin Smith briefly leaving the hospital to drop a suitcase off at a car, asked him for an update. He said no. Now, Fotis Doulos has been at this Bronx hospital since Tuesday after trying to kill himself inside the garage of his Farmington home by carbon monoxide poisoning. Doulos was supposed to be at a Stanford Superior Court that afternoon for a bond hearing with the very real chance his bond was going to be revoked and that he'd end up back behind bars. But he never showed up, and when officers went to the house, that's when they found and pulled him from the car. After working on him for more than a half hour, first responders were able to get a faint pulse back. An ambulance rushed him to the Yukon Medical Center with LifeStart, then transporting him to here in the Bronx. That's because Jacoby Medical Center is one of the leading hospitals in the world when it comes to hyperbaric chamber treatment. They're trying to get as much pure oxygen into Dulos following that CO poisoning. Now, yesterday, Dulos' defense team described his outlook as grim. And when asked today if they would be addressing reporters, here's what attorney Kevin Smith had to say. So there you hear him. He says we'll be saying something at the appropriate time, just not telling us when that will be. But again, uh, Doulos' defense team and family here from Greece continue to stay by his side here at the hospital. We're live with the mobile newsroom in the Bronx. Matt McFarland, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Yeah, Lori and Rosanna, Photos Dulos spent the night at Jacoby here being treated for carbon monoxide poisoning this morning. Doctors are still fighting to prevent the man accused of killing his wife from killing himself. A medical evacuation chopper from Connecticut touching down in the Bronx. FDNY rushing Fotis Dulos to Jacoby Medical's trauma center. An urgent attempt to save the man accused of killing the mother of his five kids. The 52-year-old, it appears, tried to take his own life. Officers discovering Dulos inside his car in the garage of his Farmington mansion yesterday. They were checking on him after he was late for a bond hearing. They could see through a window that Mr. Dulos was sitting in his vehicle and he had obvious signs of medical distress. Officers forced entry and immediately began to perform life-saving measures. First responders finding a faint pulse and shuttling the murder suspect to the hospital. Police allege Fotis Dulos killed his estranged wife, Jennifer Dulos. The pair were embroiled in a bitter divorce and custody battle when she vanished after dropping her five kids off at school on May 24th. Authorities say Fotis attacked Jennifer in her garage, leaving behind a bloody crime scene and drove off with her body, which to this day has never been found. Dulos' ex-girlfriend Michelle Traconis and former attorney Kent Mawinney also arrested and facing conspiracy to commit murder charges. All three have pleaded not guilty to the charges against them. Dulos has been out on $6 million bond, but it's likely that would have been revoked yesterday during that emergency bond hearing. That hearing now pressing on this afternoon in Stanford, Connecticut, without Fotis Dulos. As for those five Dulos children, we're told that they're staying with Jennifer's mother. That's the very latest here live outside Jacoby Medical this morning. Drone footage captured the dramatic minutes Farmington police officers tried to revive Fotis Dulos. Officers found the 52-year-old unresponsive while sitting in his running vehicle in the garage of his Farmington home. They performed CPR for more than 10 minutes, stopping only to check for a pulse. Farmington Police Lieutenant Timothy McKenzie. He had obvious signs of medical distress. Officers forced entry and immediately began to perform life-saving measures. Dulos's attorney tells CBS News he apparently tried to kill himself by carbon monoxide poisoning. Farmington police found him while performing a welfare check after Dulos failed to show up for a bond hearing that could have sent him back to prison for the alleged murder of his wife. Mr. Dulos was uh, transported to Yukon Health by ambulance where he is now listed as critical condition. Dulos was arrested earlier this month and charged with the murder of his estranged wife, Jennifer Dulos, seven months after her disappearance. Her body has never been found. 
Dulos' ex-girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, and his former attorney, Kent Maloney, were also charged with conspiracy to commit murder in Jennifer's death. Well, this is video of Dulos arriving by medical helicopter to a New York City hospital where he was transferred a little more than an hour ago. He remains in critical condition in an intensive care unit tonight. Meanwhile, back here at his Farmington, Connecticut home, police remain on scene, Nora. All right, Mola, thank you. The stunning turn in the case of the missing mother of five in Connecticut. Her husband charged with her murder, paramedics rushing to his home today after authorities say he tried to take his own life. They found him unresponsive. Here's ABC's Stephanie Ramos. Paramedics in Connecticut today racing from the home of Fotis Dulos. The accused murderer later airlifted to a New York hospital in critical condition from carbon monoxide poisoning. Police say after Dulos failed to appear for a bail hearing, they went to his home for a wellness check where he tried to take his own life. They could see through a window that Mr. Dulos was sitting in his vehicle and he had obvious signs of medical distress. Dulos is facing a murder charge in the death of his estranged wife, Jennifer, who vanished last May after dropping off their children at school. At the time, the couple was locked in a bitter custody battle over their five children. Dulos insisting all along he had nothing to do with his wife's disappearance. It's an exhausting fight. I love my children. That's about it. Dulos's former attorney and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, are now charged with conspiracy to commit murder. Jennifer's body has never been found. Dulos is still in critical condition here at the hospital, and there is a heavy police presence. Officers stationed all around it. And David, we know Dulos has just been transferred from the ER to a hyperbaric oxygen chamber. Hey, what's my NIC? Twenty one, okay, perfect, thank you. All right. Be a pretty Hey, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Okay.
Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I guess this is just gonna be a thumb sucker kind of off cam of me talking. Okay, it's gonna be a quick hit, so. Yeah, my shot got really dark. Really dark. <clears throat> Okay. Do you know what they're going to ask me? <clears throat> okay. Yeah, Brett and Amanda, we're set up in the area behind Foda's Doulas' home. We're on Parish Road where investigators are currently on Jeffrey executing that search warrant we've been telling you about. Uh, passing by Jefferson Crossing earlier today, we saw a large convoy be swarming part of the investigation. Now, from where we are standing on the road, zooming with our camera, we can really only see a silver BMW uh, in an archway and police in plain clothes walking back and forth. I know it's getting dark, so we're doing our best to show you what we're seeing from the road. If you can look at the camera, you'll see some movement, a couple of police officers walking back and forth behind that BMW. Now, as of now, we know Dulos is still at Jacoby Hospital in the Bronx in critical condition. Uh, police have not yet come forward to tell us more about the search warrant, but we hope to learn more about this later tonight as the investigation goes on. But for now, I'm live in Farmington. Carmen Chow, Fox 61 News. Yep, I can hear you. You know, Brent, from where we are standing and with it being dark, it's really tough to tell if they're carrying anything. All I can tell you at this point is they are just plain clothes detectives kind of walking in and out of the home, it appears, and behind that BMW that you're looking at. We haven't seen, or I personally haven't seen police go in and out of the home, but we've really just seen them centered on the garage for now as to why. Uh, I'll leave that up to police as the night goes on. All right, thank you.